If you don't mind, I would like um, uh, Sheila Dixit to now move over to South America for a bit. You were very kind before to already engage in some of these issues, but we'll come back to you and ask uh, first Enrique Peñalosa and then Governor Serra to address these uh, wider issues of governance and how you dealt with the problems and its opportunities. Enrique. Okay. I will um, try to refer not so much to what we did, but maybe also to what we didn't do or to a problem that I see, the, the, the big problem that I see with urban uh, decisions. Clearly, the issue is how to create more inclusion, more equality, more justice, how to help the poor. Uh, but class conflict, I think, is not, has not disappeared. I mean, what serves some people in society affects negatively others. It's not the caricature of the Marxist model where the, some billionaire was the evil man and then has in conflict with the workers or things like this. But clearly, there are very large conflicts between the middle classes, the upper middle classes, car-owning upper middle classes, and the poor in society. Uh, I like to think that when we look today upon the French Revolution, it seems that uh, everything that changed in the French Revolution was very obvious, that there were such obvious changes that had to be made because it was obvious that you should not pay taxes to the nobles or that uh, uh, people should be able to choose the line of work and not follow their parents' work. Or, but it was not so obvious because a thousand years had gone by and nothing had changed and huge inequalities existed. I think today, before our own eyes, there are tremendous inequalities that seem today to us that they are very normal. All over the third world, for example, we see that uh, huge investments are made in highways while the poor don't even have running water or schools or hospitals. And we think that's progress. So I think there is, there is uh, a conflict, I would say it seems almost trite, but there is a very important conflict. The big conflict today is between the demands of cars for infrastructure and the needs of the poor for housing, schools, uh, hospitals, parks, and all sorts of things. Uh, clearly, the 20, 30, 40 percent upper income people in society come totally pressure and pressure and pressure in order to have more cars, more car, more roads, elevated highways. And we, that's the biggest drain on resources to attend to the needs of the poor. And I would say moreover, these upper middle classes pressure for investments in rail systems, rail solutions which could be which are solutions which could be done much, much, much cheaply with bus systems, and we are really taking money away from the needs of the poorest peasants and from the poorest people in society in order to institute these type of things. I think, I think we will have to advance towards a scheme such as London, where we are going to have, the whole world is going to advance towards a system where we charge car for car use in order to subsidize a better and better public transport. That will be very difficult, but I see that's the only solution in the long run. Uh, for example, uh, there are other conflicts, as the one I mentioned here yesterday, between the private property of land around growing cities. There is no justification whatsoever for the huge gains that are being accrued by a few billionaires, land speculators, which are the main cause. When we talk about slums, to a large extent, we are talking about the cause of slums, the, the other side of the coin of these problems for solving the, the housing needs of the poor are the gains that are being made by landowners around cities. And at least in Latin America, 
that's extremely, that's totally clearly the case. The, the reason for slums is the private property of land of some people, because clearly the people can build their houses sooner or later. The only obstacle is land. Uh, therefore, uh, I think we are going to have to think differently, and that's very difficult. Uh, in, in, in transport, for example, uh, here I hear, I hear that 53% of the people in Mumbai walk to work. I don't know if that's right or not, but that's what I've heard here. But clearly, we, if we are talking about equality, we have to begin to think that we are making a city more respectful of human dignity, to have pavements, to have bicycle ways. These are not minor things. These are not funny things. These are not some somewhat ridiculous things. These are of the essence if we are trying to make a city for the poor, a city where the poor feel well, a city where the poor feel respected, a city where the poor feel included. And uh, again, I would like to emphasize once again, there is a clear conflict between a very unjust conflict because the, the upper middle classes, 10, 20, 30, 40 percent of the people who have all the education, all the economic power, all the political clout, and they make decisions for their own benefit in terms of road infrastructure. They are the ones who most press, for example, for underground subways or things like this that will not take any space away from their cars, while they have not the slightest intention of using these systems. They only want to put the poor away, preferably underground, where they don't even have to see them. Uh, and, and I think, uh, unfortunately, the poor have not even consciousness yet of this type of conflicts, and maybe even politically, this type of conflicts amazingly have not come up into the political discussion, because I think there are very clear conflicts, but unfortunately, they have not even begun to be clearly expressed in order to at least be discussed in the political arena. Enrique, can I ask you perhaps a difficult question, but nonetheless one that has been raised by uh, discussions before, which is uh, about uh, the notion of um, uh, accountability to an electorate and to the important notion that you've just introduced, which is the one of thinking differently, i.e. taking risks, and then going for an election and not winning. Uh, which exactly. is the unfortunate news, for those of you who don't know, that Enrique <laughs> did not win the election only a few days ago. The only fortunate thing is that he's therefore with us. <laughs> but, uh, but Enrique, you might reflect on that. I would have tension. been here with you too, but in a, in a happier tone. <laughs> 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 no, but clearly, for example, in my case, clearly, uh, one of the main issues in my campaign when I lost is that... Uh, the, there was the, we, Bogota has instituted probably what is the most uh, advanced bus system in the world, uh, inspired by Curitiba, another Brazilian system, but uh, today, uh, and uh, unfortunately, this system has to a large degree been identified with my name in Colombian politics, despite that several other mayors and all Colombian cities are putting them into place. And uh, this system was going to be put into the, into the main artery in Bogota, where I would say 60% of Colombia's 10,000 richest people live. Uh, not Bogota's 10,000 richest people, 60% of Colombia's uh, 10,000 richest people. And of course, people don't resign themselves to the fact that they might have to change the way of life. So they think this, the solution, they still dream that the solution is to put a subway and then, then the cars will be able to continue to, to function as usual. So the, the other candidate promised a subway, which was a big lie, by the way, because there is no money. But the, regardless of that, regardless of that, uh, clearly there is...